What's up guys, it's me again. We're on the next segment of Firewall Teach to Fish. Uh, and this one is concerning the software selection and pretty much everything software related. So I didn't know where to shove some of this. This is going to cover licensing, access to the software, whether it's downloading licenses, uh, how things are licensed or accessing the actual uh, like Firepower codes, things like that, right? So everything software related, we're gonna cover that right now. All right, so again, this is the initial architecture, engineering, and implementation uh, segment. So this will cover everything you do typically when you're trying to figure out which product, which software you want, how to get it, how to order it, all that stuff. This is a software overview. So here's our agenda. We're gonna cover accesses, how to get access to all of this stuff and what that entails. The licensing, how the products are kind of licensed and how you store your licenses, order them, get them, all that stuff. Uh, software downloads, where you can go to find the software for all the products, most of them anyways, and then uh, how you get access to those software, and then how you kind of pick which software to use. All right, so in general, getting access to the software and licensing works in concert with your Cisco connection online ID, your CCO ID. Now that kind of has two workflows for the software access season, and I'm not sure why it's broken out like this, but uh, on one side, your CCO ID is tied to what's called contracts and entitlements. And, and really it's tied to contracts and those contracts grant you entitlements that allow you to get service on your hardware that you ordered and access to the software so you can download and use the software. And then on the other leg, your CCO ID is tied to what privileges, what smart accounts and virtual accounts you have access to in order to utilize centrally stored and administered licensing. So those are the two kind of forks or legs. And you'll run into some issues where maybe you don't have access to stuff, but we're gonna cover that here. So let's cover licensing first. Now remember your CCO ID is tied to smart accounts and virtual accounts. Smart licensing is the newest licensing, which is kind of the brain in the cloud where licensing is controlled by a Cisco maintained cloud server. And it's done through role-based access, tying your name, to accounts and having licenses ordered and deposited into those accounts. And then you linking your products back to those accounts to then pull and utilize the licenses that have been stored there. These licenses are bound to the account. And by account, I mean smart account and the sub virtual accounts. And they're reusable. So let's say you've applied a license to your Firepower device and that device goes belly up. Okay, that's not a problem. Uh, the license can then be instantly freed up by you. You can throw a new firewall online and tell it to reach out to your smart account with your virtual account, say it needs to have the same licenses and boom, it just works because it's bound to the account and you have access to administer that account through role-based access. The old way of licensing was product activation keys and these worked, but they were a little messy. Um, so I like to hearken this back to things uh, one analogy is it's soul bound to the requester. So back, back, back in the day, engineer A would order some licenses and they would be tied to, linked to only his CCO ID and emailed directly to him. He would apply it to the device and he would move on. And then three years down the line, somebody else would need to reallocate that license or do something with it and nobody could find the packs. And that's because they were only sent to that one engineer and he is now gone. So those packs, were then kind of lost or frozen. And you would have to reach out to Cisco and say, ah, oh, I need these licenses, can you send them back to me? Cisco would be like, well, do you have the SO? And you'd be like, of course I don't. I wasn't here when they ordered three years ago. And then you'd have to go talk to your project managers and try to find, it was a mess, right? I'm not saying it's everything is solved now with smart licensing, but it's in a much better place than with smart licensing. So then, once this pack was applied, the product was also bound to the product. If that product died or went belly up, you couldn't simply just hook up a new product and call home the licensing. You had to literally get the license reissued by Cisco so that you could then apply it to a new device. It was kind of a, an old, archaic, messy system. Okay, so under licensing, we'll go over the traditional packs first. The original traditional licensing system, we would send out a physical piece of paper attached with your device, right? And it would have this series of like 32 characters string, uh, the pack, the product activation code on a piece of paper. And then you as the engineer would fire up the device and config T and then enter this software pack to activate a feature on say your ASA. Um, 
And that wasn't fun. Number one, that licensed physical paper was sent to only you. And then if you moved on or something happened, somebody else would have to get a new one sent out or delivered to them or emailed or whatever. I'm talking long, long time ago. <coughs> the newish packs, <coughs> we still do packs in some cases, but they're delivered and the machinations behind it are tied to your smart accounts now. So they're delivered by email and they're redeemed by you on the, uh, the traditional licensing portal linked to your smart account uh, to the specific serial number of a device that you have. So you got an ASA, you say I need strong encryption, uh, you get a pack delivered to you in your traditional licensing part of the smart account, and then you would go uh, click, click, hey, I need to generate a license, and it would ask you for the serial number and then generate the pack, the key that you need to put on the device. That's how it works now. That's a newish version of the packs. Now we move on to smart licensing. This kind of gets rid of that whole archaic system where if a device died, you had to get licenses reissued, or if you wanted to issue a, a license, you had to go generate a license. Now all licenses are ordered by the customer. They're placed into a virtual account within the smart account. And then your devices just call home and say, hey, I need a strong encryption license. And your virtual account says, yeah, I got one, you got it. And it just works. Now your users have role-based access to this smart account and the specific virtual accounts they need. So think of the smart account as the parent account tied to your business. And the virtual accounts are many segmented accounts with role-based access discrete to them uh, for each business unit. Say you're Cisco and you got a firewall division, you got a duo division, you got an umbrella division, right? We could allocate licenses specifically for each of that those subset of customers. So engineer A working on virtual account A doesn't have access to licenses in virtual account two or B, All right? So the licenses are stored in the virtual account and your devices subscribe to it and then pull the information down. So here's kind of a, a live demo. When you want to talk about licensing or software download or software access, you come to software.cisco.com. Now, I talked about smart accounts and virtual accounts. Smart accounts and smart licenses are stored on the smart software manager side. So I'm gonna show you that first. I'm gonna to have to authenticate, which is what you will have to do as well. And this authentication is what then presents to you the information that is tied uniquely to your user ID and this smart accounts or virtual accounts that you have access to. Now, I have a smart account here that I'm using. I can choose a bunch of them. I can say, hey, I'm in the Lockheed Martin space. And then under this screen, you can see, number one, the alerts. And these are things like, hey, you've got expired licenses or they are expiring soon, which will help you manage your licenses. You've got an inventory. These are the licenses that are currently uh, generated in your account. And you notice when I clicked on inventory, I now have this virtual account. These are all the discrete virtual accounts that I have access to. Now there may be more than just three. You always have a default. A default is where everything goes if somebody forgot to specify which virtual account it should go to. Now, how do you get your devices talking is you generate a token here. And then on each type of product, registration token, on each type of product, there's going to be a special set of commands that you execute to then register these devices. Now, I'm not going to go through the full registration process here because that will be in the demonstration at the very end where I walk through all of this uh, initial configuration and stand up of a firewall live for you guys. So you generate the token and then on the device, you will need that token. And that token links to this virtual account and smart account for that device. That's how it knows where to go to talk to. And then under licenses are all of your discrete licenses. So you can see like strong encryption here. And if I was to fire up a Firepower 2000 series device, you can see I bought six, none are being used. So if a 2000 device called home said, I need strong encryption, it would automatically hand out one and boom, that simple, super easy. Product instances is what shows up when one of your devices has registered. So you can see there's only one Firepower 2000 device that's actually registered right now. And based on license consumption, it is not using the strong encryption license. Simple as that. Now we can come over to event log and take a look at everything that's happened, who's used the account, how many licenses, what devices. It's a good history, way to keep track of this stuff. Now there's a lot of other things you can look at here, but again, this is a 10,000 foot view for initial installation. That's all we're really gonna use for now, but I would encourage you to explore this page. 
Now, if we come back to the traditional licensing page, this is when I was talking about when things were packs. And originally they were paper-based packs. But now there's digital packs that are still issued and tied to your smart account. So you'll see as I click into the product license registration, it's gonna take a second to load this page. And when it does, it's gonna display my smart account and my virtual account. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one here. And then I'm gonna drop into the default account. <coughs> now packs are like pluripotent stem cells. They're entitlements that allow you to generate licenses for a specific device. So in this case, you can see there's a bunch of fulfilled and unfulfilled records. I'm gonna drop this down, display all 100, because I wanna see some unfulfilled. And you can see that whoever's account this has, they've got some unified communications licenses, and there's quite a few others too that eventually we'll be able to see. But what you would do is, if you have a pack and you need licenses for something, then you would say, hey, give me some licenses from a new pack. And you would come here and enter the token ID and then hit OK. And then it would walk you through a series of steps through a menu that allows you to generate the discrete licenses, which are these. And these are what you actually apply to the device, that 32 character string or the file that you need to apply to it, depending on the product that you're traditionally licensing. So then you come here and you can say download the license or email it. And then there's a fancy rehost too. And this is where, because of the smart account now, the smart account tie-in, this isn't paper anymore, you yourself can request to remove it from the old device and then reissue it to a new device. All this information is logged. You can look at the transaction histories and you can also see what devices are currently registered via serial number tie-ins to the licenses. You take the pack, you say, I want to generate a license for ISE. Here's the serial number, and it generates the license. And that is what identifies the device. So that's it for the licensing real quick. We're going to switch back. That's a live demo. Now let's talk about downloading software. Let's say you figured out that you're ordering a Firepower device, and you want to download the Firepower software. Now you have a few things to figure out. Uh, number one, where is the software? Uh, and number two, how to find it, how to get it. So let's now go back to our page. We're gonna go back to software.cisco.com again. And now instead of dancing over this middle one, we're gonna click access downloads. So when you look, come to this page, if you're not already logged in, it will prompt you right here on the screen to download software. If you've been here before and downloaded software, it's going to populate this my previous downloads with the software you have downloaded before. But if you're looking for a new software or it's just not showing up and you don't wanna go through the breadcrumbs, you can just search for Firepower 2100 series. And then you say, oh, well, I've got a 2110, I need software for that. Here we go, I've followed the breadcrumbs down the trail, and now I can download either ASA software and the ASDM manager for it, or FTD software. Now if I click FTD software, this is gonna give me all of the software, the initial install software, the update software, the patches and hot fixes. And one thing you're gonna notice over here to the left is the gold star. And the gold star is software that Cisco currently recommends. And this is based on a bunch of metrics we collect from our customers. Number one is how much adoption there is out there. If it's like over 30% of our market space. And if we're getting less than 2% uh, attack cases for that software release, stuff like that, right? We have these metrics that we run and we say, this seems to be the most stable software. It's been out here baking for long enough. So you'll never see like a .0 uh, released and immediately mark gold star. If you do, it's a, it's a mistake. Uh, it will never be 700 gold star within one day of being released because we have to have time to collect these metrics. So on Firepower Software, for example, if you're downloading a new image, this is it right here. Brand new, fresh install for 2100. Now just make, make a note of 7.0.1 software for 2100 is different than 7.0.1 for 1000 or 4000 or 9000. So definitely follow these breadcrumbs. Select the 2110 and then choose the FTD software. Then you can download it and install it. You also have an upgrade file here. So if you're already running Firepower code on the device, say 667, then you can just download this and do an in-place upgrade of that code. So either way, Gold Star is what tells you that it's a good software. And then you can see in this case, there's two. That's just because both have been baked in and have very low failure rates or TAC cases. So they're both recommended by Cisco. Now, one thing you wanna pay attention to on these releases is 
you may be interested in during your initial <coughs> planning in software that is going to be supported for a very long time. And so we have this longevity rating uh, and we have a plan that tells you if it's a short-term release, a long-term release, or an extra long-term release. And I have to tell you that because the extra long-term releases are gonna be supported for an extra long time, extra long-term releases are the ones that Cisco are investing on getting certified with common criteria, with Doden, with USGV6. So pretty much any planning, if you're a federal customer, you should always plan on using an XLTR release. Now I embedded a link here because this is a very important and very good link for you it describes the release cycle mantra. So you can fully understand what is going to be a long-term release, what is going to be an extra long-term release, and what is going to be a short-term release. And it also goes over the full nuances of how this uh, numbering structure is built. Major release, minor release, maintenance release, and patch build. And this tells you when they're going to increment those numbers. If there's major feature changes, the first number changes. If there's minor changes or new functions enhancements, uh, the second number will change. Bug fixes and security is the third number, and then patches like critical hot fixes and things like that are the fourth number. That is a lot of information for you to digest, but it is extremely useful to see. And they have a nice visual aid here so you can understand that extra long-term releases will fully outlive a short-term release or a long-term release that is released even after the XLTR. This is why I say it is very important if you're looking for stability and looking for those certifications, always plan around extra long-term releases. All right, so back to it. That's it. That's our kind of software selection mantra, kind of going through all of the different nuances of getting access to software, getting access to licenses, downloading those, uh, applying those, and other considerations about how the code is published and recommended. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you next time.